Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. Today we spoke with Sherikam RCMP officer Corporal Yannick Gagnon about his role during the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's our conversation. How has our work changed since the tragedy? Um, hasn't changed much except for the fact that the, uh, the population, uh, the residents here have been very supportive and uh, a lot of people are uh, stopping us on the road and giving us their uh, sympathies for, uh, for the member that has fallen. Uh, but it's also uh, understandable that a lot of people in the community uh, in the community are, are grieving uh, for the loss of the, the, all those uh, individuals in the, in the area. Uh, but our chain, our work has, uh, I mean, uh, we were affected because we had, we had to send some members to help. Uh, so we did that to change a little bit of our schedules, but uh, everybody's back to town now uh, after they did the initial uh, uh, response and uh, we're back to uh, normal work. How has your work changed since the pandemic started? Our work has changed quite uh, significantly uh, in the in the uh, uh, in the past few uh, few weeks, uh, month and month and a half or so. Uh, we had to modify our schedule uh, uh, just just so uh, so ourselves we keep ourselves safe uh, by self distancing between members. Uh, we have to do some modifications inside the office to uh, to basically spread the uh, the desks apart. I mean, Shady Camp office is not a big office already, uh, but we try to maximize uh, the space in between the members. And uh, uh, one thing that we weren't about uh, able to do is distancing uh, Nicole from all of us. So what we've done is we modified her schedule. Nicole's our admin assistant. Uh, we modified her schedule to uh, to basically get her to be at the office while we're not in the office. So we're, uh, we're basically uh, coming into the office in the morning, uh, doing the work that we have to do, office work early in the morning. Uh, so she can come in and spend most of the day. So the, uh, the office hours have been a little bit affected by this, uh, but also um, throughout Canada, the office hours have been, uh, uh, the offices have been all uh, modified just to, uh, uh, to protect ourselves and the, and the public from uh, from being in contact with each other, uh, so there is uh, there are some services that are not available right now until uh, this pandemic uh, until we kind of uh, go back into uh, the down uh, grade of the pandemic uh, efforts. Um, we've also modified a little bit of uh, our habits uh, when we. Uh, when we go to a car to a police vehicle, we have to disinfect the vehicle from the uh, previous member. Uh, not that anybody is infected right now in Shady Camp, but um, we uh, we do wipe down uh, like all the parts, the moving parts of the vehicle, just so uh, just so the next member doesn't get the germs from the previous members, uh, and so on. Everybody's uh, carrying their uh, personal personal protective equipment, uh, like wipes, uh, goggles, uh, gloves. Uh, masks. Uh, we we're all equipped with uh, with those uh, PPEs, and we carry those in the car with us at all times. So in case we run into a situation where it's unknown if there's uh, anybody infected with uh, with COVID nineteen, then at least we have the protective equipment to help us out. What type of services are no longer available? The main one that's not available right now, uh, except an emergency, which we can um, we can uh, help people out. If it's an emergency and they need to, to do a, to have a criminal record check, uh, they can't come to the office. But we'll make arrangements through uh, uh, through emails and through the telephone. Uh, that's that's basically the main one uh, that's not uh, in office complaints. Uh, we're trying to avoid those, uh, so we recommend everybody to call our uh, to call our uh, service line if it's not an emergency. Uh, People in Shady Camp uh, or in the Shady Camp area, uh, most people are aware, but the, the number is 224-2050, and they can call that line. And uh, and uh, when they call in the office, she'll respond, she'll, she'll answer the calls, and then she dispatches the calls for service uh, or questions, uh, any kind of questions. And uh, if she's not in the office, then the calls go to our um, our, uh, our dispatch in Truro, uh, which is then back, dispatched, uh, dispatched sorry, back to us. Have you received a lot of calls from the community during the pandemic? Since the beginning, yes, we have. We have received a lot of questions, uh, a lot of concerns, lots of uh, uh, complaints uh, regarding the pandemic. Uh, 
we do uh, we do try to respond to every complaint that we have uh, that we receive uh, and unfortunately uh, my biggest issue with uh, with all of this is we're receiving we're receiving a lot of uh, anonymous complaints uh, a lot of people are giving us anonymous complaints uh, which are in turn harder to uh, to enforce uh, for the fact that we can't usually when we have a complaint we call back the complainant and uh, and we ask for more details right and in this case in these cases where the complaints are anonymous and often the complaints are many hours after uh, after the observations or the, the, uh, the incidents uh, there's little to almost no uh, enforcement capabilities that it give that it, that it gives us. So, I like, we do appreciate the complaints and we do take all of those seriously. Even if it's anonymous, we'll try our best to to go and and see what's happening if if it's something that's happening uh, or if it's something that happened. Uh, unfortunately, when we don't see it, we can't respond to it. Have you issued a lot of tickets regarding uh, COVID nineteen measures? In Shetty Camp, we have not received uh, issued any tickets. We've uh, we've given uh, I don't want to say a fair amount of uh, warnings, but we have given warnings uh, to people. And and to be honest, the warnings that we've given they work uh, because we haven't had to give the same warning to the to, to give warning or to go back to the same person or same individuals. So obviously, uh, this is an education more than than an enforcement phase. Um, I know that the Dr. Strang and, and uh, the, the Premier has asked us to, uh, to uh, up our enforcement uh, and giving out tickets, giving more, uh, giving more tickets. Uh, but we haven't had to give tickets because people, once they're told once, they don't repeat. Uh, like beaches, uh, beaches is one, one big, big thing where we, uh, we've given uh, quite, a, quite a bit of warnings in the beginning of the, uh, the pandemic. Um, and and that was also an unclear thing, right? In the in the province, there's a lot of beaches. Uh, some are municipal, some are provincial, some are not quite rated. Uh, so we do try to to talk to people and explain like the beaches are are uh, out of bounds uh, for most of the province. But it, again, uh, we'll we'll have to do some kind of investigation, right? If there's a car with only one person on board, uh, maybe we'll have to use our discretion more than. Uh, going the enforcement way and giving out tickets, um, but uh, for the most part, uh, I think the population has been uh, pretty um, um, not successful, but they've been a bit cooperative in in following up our our request, and uh, a lot of those are are strictly recommendations that are not enforceable. Uh, a lot of questions come; they arise because of uh, traffic in town. And uh, and we have noticed it as well. Like there's a lot of traffic. The weather is being uh, becoming a lot nicer. The sun's out. People are. Uh, I mean, it, it, we're going on six or seven weeks now of isolation. So a lot of people are getting a little uh, tired of all this, and it's understandable. And we have to use our judgment too. Right? Um, I can't I can't go out and do a roadblock and stop every car on the road and and uh, and tell them to go home. Uh, we're using the people's uh, uh, cooperation and, and self-awareness of, of the, the entire situation to uh, uh, to abide by those recommendations by, by uh, Dr. Strand and the Premier Mickey. We received questions from the community and many people commented on how many cars they still saw. But is there a law that could you give tickets to people who are on the road? There's no law for people not to be on the road. Uh, those are recommendations only and uh, the recommendations by Premier McNeil and Dr. Strand uh, have been to uh, to limit your drives to essential drives, right? To go to the store, go to the pharmacy, uh, go uh, go pick up at the, at the restaurant, and these these uh, they're all um, it's all normal, right? People people need to uh, to self supply and to to um, to do do those activities that will keep them uh, healthy, right? Uh, unfortunately, there is uh, there are a lot of people that are going for their Sunday drives all day, um, and if it's only one person in the car or a family in the car, uh, enforcement-wise, there's there's no law against it. 
uh, at this time. I mean, it could change on it any time. We all know that the, the laws, they change on a daily basis. Um, or oh, I should say a weekly basis, uh, but the recommendations, they kind of change on almost on a daily basis uh, from the comments made by, uh, by uh, uh, the, the government. Uh, so we, uh, we here at the office, uh, we monitor uh, those laws was, uh, because they change and it's, uh, it's a constant um, evolution for this, uh, this pandemic uh, until it starts ramping down. Uh, we can see modifications uh, any day uh, that will, uh, and some of them might lead to, uh, to no uh, non-essential driving. Uh, and we've seen it in other provinces where they've done that. Uh, and that leads to some confusion as well. Uh, like Quebec has different policies, uh, New Brunswick has different policies, PEI has different policies, Newfoundland has different policies. And, and Nova Scotia, of course, they also have different policies. Um, and different different methods of enforcing and different uh, different rules uh, for all this. So people, uh, it tends to lead a lot of people to to being confused, thinking that one law in one province is the same here in Nova Scotia. Uh, but unfortunately, at this time, we I can't enforce a recommendation. I can't enforce uh, or myself or uh, any other police officer in Nova Scotia. We can only enforce what's in the law. How do you keep a check on people who have to be in quarantine for 14 days upon arrival? There's, there's two, basically two, uh, two books on this. Uh, there's a pandemic law that, will, uh, that forces people that come out from out of the country uh, to self-isolate for 14 days. On those people, um, they, they basically get some kind of registration when they enter the country. Then they... Uh, get put in a data bank where we get advised by uh, uh, by the RCMP's uh, uh, supervisors that deal with the pandemic. Uh, we get a task uh, here at the office to monitor them. So uh, the first thing is once we hear about it, we have to go and meet uh, meet those people, explain to them the rules, and make sure that they are aware. They've already been explained, and most people they understand all the, uh, the regulations about it. Uh, we'd like to we like to uh, basically show our face, explain to them uh, this is what's happening. We know that you guys just came in the town, uh, came in uh, the country, and uh, for the next 14 days you have to self isolate. They have to have a plan in place for uh, for subsistence, of course, and um, and we'll we'll make uh, uh, random visits just to make sure that they're abiding. Um, as for people coming in the province, unfortunately in Nova Scotia, it's not like in other provinces where they take your name, your address, they take all your information. Here in Nova Scotia, people entering the border, at the border, uh, they, they get explained that, okay, you're coming to Nova Scotia, you're gonna have to self-isolate for 14 days. Uh, there is different rules for um, uh, foreign workers, of course, for uh, workers from other province, I would say, uh, which has been quite, a, quite an issue here in Shady Camp. Uh, they have different rules, uh, especially for the fishermen with their boats, where they can go to their cabin and cabin and or um, accommodation, and uh, their boat and their one would be an extension of the other. That's what that's how the uh, the government has seen it, and that's how they're asking us to uh, to see it as well. So for these workers, uh, for the the crews, especially the crews. Um, what we've been doing is uh, we we've had uh, the cooperation for the harbor from the harbor authorities uh, here in Chedi uh, Camp in uh, Saint Joseph de Moine and uh, in Belle Cote, and they they advise us if there are crews from out of province. What we do is we go and we meet with the captains and the crews, and we explain to them how um, how they uh, they are to uh, isolate within their cabin, their accommodation, and their, uh, their boats, but they're not to go anywhere else in town. And I think for the, main, for, for the most part, everybody's been cooperative. They, they're understanding and they know, before, even before coming here, they know uh, what they have to do and they understand that the, the community, some people in the community are not happy that this is happening. Uh, so they know that people will uh, call the RCMP if they see them uh, out and about. Uh, so I can't, I can't think of any situation where somebody have called on those crews. So they've been abiding by those rules for the, the self-isolation um, that we know of. If we don't have the report, if we don't know, 
obviously we have a big uh, big area to cover so we can't be at the dig or at the, uh, the docks all the time uh, but if we know about it we'll go talk to them if we know that they're coming in we'll go talk to them and uh, for pe for other people from other province uh, then we have to rely on their uh, honesty uh, when we talk to them see when they came in if uh, if they're not honest there's not there's not a way for me to uh, to uh, know unless I do a, a full investigation uh, to know if they have been in the in the, country, the province or, uh, for 14 days or not. So uh, so I rely like we have to rely on a lot of honesty or on uh, investigation. Just to go back a little bit, could you clarify what you mean by the boat is an extension of the home or the accommodation for fishers? So basically, what uh, what the uh, Emergency Health Act states is that. People coming in the country to work uh, in the sorry again uh, in the province to work uh, to start work uh, and examples in the Chetty Camp are the uh, the crews for the boats uh, for the crab and up the upcoming uh, lobster season uh, the uh, the crew not the crews but the uh, the workers for the uh, the crab plant all them people they have to self isolate for fourteen days. For the fishermen with uh, on uh, on uh, boats, uh, the government has decided has taken the decision that the the residence that they would be at and the boat would be considered an extension of each other. So so in the morning or before starting to work, they have to be at their cabin. They can go to their boat, but strictly to their boat. They can't stop anywhere. They can't. Uh, uh, they can't go shopping. They can't go do anything. What they have, it is basically from point A to point B, and and when they return from from sea, uh, it's from their boats, their cabins. Their uh, 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 that decision was made because it's it's kind of um, I don't think it would be appropriate to to tell them you gotta stay on the boat, especially for little boats where they don't have accommodations. So I believe, and and that's from me, and I don't. I, I wasn't there when they made the decision, um, but I believe that would be the uh, the reasoning uh, behind all this. But we we're trying to make it clear to the boat captains and their crews that that this is what ha has to be done, and you are not to be in contact with any public from the from the community, to just to make sure that we don't uh, spread the, uh, the COVID nineteen. If uh, for any instance they would have the uh, uh, the virus. So technically, fishers coming from out of province could start working right away as long as they're on their boat. As long as they're on the boat. What if, you know, at the end of the day, they come with, they come back with a crab, for example, and they have to sell it. How, do they enter it in, in any, any contact with other people? This, <clears throat> this would have to, uh, to be asked to, uh, to the people that are working in the, that are working in the plant. I don't, I try to stay away from the plants, but I do, uh, I do believe that they would, they would enter in contact at some level to the unloaders for the for the for the fish plant or for uh, for any buyers there that are. But again, this um, this is a decision that was made uh, by IR authorities, and uh, we have to respect them. Uh, I've talked to uh, the plant uh, supervisors and the, the plant uh, owner, and uh, we, they they are uh, making efforts to. Uh, to make sure that all the workers, uh, whether the unloaders or the workers in the plant, are uh, doing self isolation, and uh, or so, uh, not self isolation, sorry, uh, social distancing as much as possible. But uh, on a, obviously, uh, on a boat, uh, the uh, self distancing would be somewhat difficult uh, between crews and unloaders. Just a question. I remember last time when we did the interview in French, you said that people coming out of province, regular people, not essential workers, do they need proof as of the date when they came in? It'd be nice to have a proof. And that's why I said earlier that we rely on their honesty uh, to ask them for when they come in. Because, I mean, it is difficult uh, uh, when you're just traveling uh, basically from New Brunswick to... Uh, uh, to Nova Scotia to have some kind of proof unless you stop at the board, at, at the, uh, the toll, uh, toll booth on the highway and you actually get a receipt, which most people don't get a receipt for that, right? Uh, so that, and I don't believe uh, to this day that the, uh, the people that are enforced, that, that are at the border enforcing the pandemic and telling people uh, um, what they should do. 
um, I don't believe that they're giving them any kind of documents uh, explaining when they entered, uh, unlike other provinces that they are doing. So having a proof would definitely help us out a little bit more, uh, but then that's where that's when it, uh, it falls on us to investigate a little further how uh, or when they can get home. And what would be proof? Well, like I said uh, in the interview in France, there uh, at the toll booth, uh, the ent the ticket at the toll booth would be uh, would be an amazing proof. Uh, otherwise, a gas receipt, uh, like like when you're coming in, like a gas receipt from out of Shetty Camp. Of course, if you guys are, if you have a gas receipt from Shetty Camp or Bell Cove, um, I mean it's not really proof. But if you have a gas receipt from uh, Let's say uh, New Glasgow or uh, Truro or even uh, even uh, Olac there or in Sagville that kind of gives us an indication when that day was. I had one question that came from the community as well. Um, what should people do if an RCMP car drives into their driveway? Unless um, they hear that there is a situation like there was in Porto Peak. Uh, they have to consider us friendly, and and I mean it's a difficult one because of what happened in Puerto Rico, right? If an RCMP car car comes to their driveway, uh, ninety nine point nine percent of the time it will be a friendly uh, RCMP. It will be us, and most people know us, uh, know Sam, Mike, and I. But we will rely on um, on other uh, and Kevin as well. Um, and uh, most people rely on uh, <clears throat> on seeing us uh, on a regular basis, and they they know who we are. Uh, but we do have uh, sometimes we have uh, relief relief members that come in, so they may see some stranger faces. I mean, my face might be a little strange to other people because I used to have a beard, and until the pandemic, before the pandemic, they asked us, "Oh, when did it start?" They asked us to shave just to uh, to be uh, safer with masks and all that. Uh, so uh, yeah, I get a, I get that question a lot. Are you a new member here in town? Um, but uh, I would I would tell everybody like be confident that we are here doing our job. Uh, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna continue doing the job that we're doing. Uh, there's no difference. If there is uh, a threat, uh, I understand that the uh, the message is being addressed has been addressed in the media for. Uh, uh, for warnings uh, to the public, uh, but uh, be confident that we are here to help you guys out. And if you see us, if you see a police car in your driveway, uh, it should be one of us. And in terms of COVID-19, should people cover their faces or will you be covered? When we respond to a situation, our, uh, our dispatch, they're asking the questions. Have you been out of the province? Have you been out of the country? Uh, have you been in contact with people with COVID-19? Do you have any... Uh, any uh, symptoms of that would be similar to COVID-19. Those questions are asked. Uh, they're asked and, uh, and if we don't have, if, if it's negative to everything, then we're not going to be covered. Uh, and we don't particularly expect the public to be covered. If they want to be covered, that's, that's absolutely fine with us. Um, and if we, uh, as police officers, start developing some symptoms that are alike, uh, first of all, we get tested and we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, will be um, basically put to, uh, to the side until, uh, until we know uh, if we're positive or negative to the COVID-19. But at this time, I can assure you that none of the members here in Shetty Camp are uh, uh, showing any symptoms or have had any symptoms or have had COVID-19. Anything you'd like to add? Like I said in my French interview there, uh, we do rely on people to, to follow the guidelines, follow the, uh, the recommendations. Uh, um, given by Dr. Uh, Strang and by Premier McNeil. And uh, my, my biggest uh, issue myself is the, uh, the, uh, the driving, the, the going out for, uh, for Sunday drive all day, uh, all day around the town. I understand people's, uh, people's habits and people are fed up and people are tired. But if we continue, uh, continue following those recommendations, I believe we'll be able to uh, um, to go through this, and then the uh, then the uh, restrictions might <coughs> sorry might be overturned sooner than later. 
but yes, we all have to uh, to work together. Uh, having uh, having to respond to motor vehicle collisions because people were out on Sunday drives, I mean, puts a lot of people at risk uh, for absolutely no reason. Uh, we have firefighters, we have doctors, we have nurses, we have uh, ourselves police officers, we have the paramedics, we have the tow truck drivers, we have witnesses. That's a lot of people that are involved in one single motor vehicle collision. So if we can avoid as much as possible um, the, 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 the tourist drives or the Sunday drives, uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, we see uh, a very few uh, vehicles going to, uh, to the National Park, which is uh, currently closed uh, to, uh, to uh, tourists. It's closed to, to, to just going for a draw ride. It's only open for through traffic. So we're helping the Park Canada officers to, uh, to uh, enforce and be visible in the park. We also have to, uh, to drive to, uh, to Pleasant Bay and to be visible there and to talk to the community there as well. Uh, so, so we're there. And anytime we encounter a vehicle that seem to be doing the tourist um, uh, tour, uh, we, we make them turn around. We have seen people all the way, like families, all the way from uh, Sydney coming for a joyride uh, on a beautiful day. And we politely ask them to, uh, to, uh, to turn around and go back and go back where they come from because uh, it's been recommended by the, uh, by the officials. You can send us your questions at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.